What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything you need to know about and what's happening here in our country on a daily basis. We're going to have some big news coming out here about inflation and interest rates being raised here. I'll give you some early news on that. Also, President Biden makes a big announcement here that I'll give you the details on here in this video as well. Uh, we got a lot to go over here in this video, and I'll catch you up here right now. So if you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new videos here and click the bell icon after subscribing. Also, thanks so much for liking and sharing these videos. Uh, let's jump right in. We're going to be getting a big announcement from the Fed about inflation and probably raising interest rates here yet again. That's right. I will keep you up to date here. The Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell, the head of the Fed, has a meeting coming up here in um, what the end of January, basically. And uh, we're getting the interest rate or the um, the CPI data, which is the inflation data here. Take a look. Inflation top of mind for investors as the Fed continues to raise rates. But that said, are there signs that things could be slowing down here? Our senior economics reporter, Steve Leisman, has more. Hi, Steve. Good morning, Morgan. Some new data we have suggests tomorrow's inflation report from the government could be soft with a possible negative headline number. And it would join other private sector data we've been following and suggesting some easing in inflation. The State Street Price Stats Inflation Index, it's called from prices on the web, falling 0.3% month to month for one of its biggest drops since the pandemic. Not surprisingly, it was driven by a sharp decline in fuel prices, along with apparel as well. Other sectors like food, they look like they were bouncing back towards the end of the month from a soft November. But the monthly decline pushing the year over year rate down to 3.9% from a high of about 6% in the summer. It's been running below the CPI, you can see there year over year, but generally tracks in the direction of it. No guarantee, of course, the CPI tomorrow will follow this data. But it's not the only inflation indicator trending down. We've been looking at these uh, price indices inside a bunch of the survey data. The ISM price, services price indice down 17 points from its peak in April 2022. ISM manufacturing price index down 53 points. And the NFIB uh, percentage of uh, respondents who are raising prices down 30 points from the peak in November 2021. Falling inflation data could explain why the market isn't following the Fed. Barry Knapp from Ironside Macro says it's because Fed Chair Jay Powell's case, the one that says rates need to rise because of rising inflation and core services, Knapp says that is falling apart. He sent me this data, the measure on how which Powell focuses on, looked at on a three-month annualized basis. It's fallen every month since peaking in June at 12% and now stands at just 3.17%. The result is the market pushes rates lower because it has to believe at this point the Fed's done enough and inflation is easing. Fed officials, they kind of acknowledge the progress, but they've stuck to their hawkish comments about higher for longer when it comes to the outlook for rates. Morgan? So we actually could see month over month negative inflation data. Well, this is some early indication to that. What do you think? Are you seeing... Uh, Infla uh, inflation come down here. We Now, remember, this is based on last month's data where we did see gas prices come down significantly. And gas prices have trended up a little bit since then. They've kind of held off, thankfully. So we were seeing gas prices rise here. And thankfully, they stopped. Thankfully. Because we were seeing gas prices start to rise pretty significantly. And that wasn't a good thing. And uh, <laughs> thankfully, they've stopped, which is good. So we're at about the price of where gas was a year ago. Gas was three thirty a year ago. It's three twenty six now. So we're pretty stagnant on gas prices being about the same as they were a year ago. Yeah, about the same as they were a month ago as well. So gas is pretty stable here with about the same price that were, were a year ago, a month ago, and a week ago. So, yeah, hopefully they go down. Hopefully they at least stay the same and at least don't go up. Let me know your thoughts on this. 
Oil prices, though, have been kind of trickling upwards. They were around $70 a barrel, and they have kind of gone up here. It's $77 a barrel for WTI crude, $82.50 for Brent crude. Uh, we've seen this kind of because Russia and Europe has, you know, they've kind of stopped buying oil from each other. So we did see um, oil basically go up almost $10 a barrel. Uh, since we've kind of seen that issue here because of a shortage in the market. Remember, these are worldwide oil prices, so they do affect the United States here. However, we have seen natural gas prices plummet. Plummet. Remember, this was around $7 a unit. They've plummeted down to three fifty a unit. So natural gas prices have come down significantly. If you use natural gas to heat your home, or uh, in your home at all. So that has come down pretty significantly. Also remember here that natural gas is used for about 40% of electricity. So if you've seen natural gas, or if you've, I'm sorry, if you've seen your electricity bill go up here in the last year, that is because 40% of electricity is produced by natural gas. So we have seen it come down here recently in the last few weeks. But this, this price can fluctuate very, very quickly. I mean, it goes up, it goes down almost in the drop of a dime within a week or two. Right? So uh, it has gone down here pretty significantly. In fact, here is a chart of natural gas prices. They're at a one-year low. So we had actually peaked here in August, even September, over $9 a unit. Okay? Um, yeah, so as, as late as September at $9 a unit, now, I know I might be in the way here a little bit, we're at, in January, all the way down to $3.50 a unit. So we went from $9 a unit in September to $3.50 a unit. So... Yeah, you can see how much this can fluctuate pretty quickly. So if you use natural gas to heat your home or, remember, 40% of electricity is comes from natural gas. So this is, if you've been wondering why your electricity goes up so much, it's because <laughs> a lot of it literally just comes from fossil fuels, like natural gas, 40% of it. Yeah, so... Um, now, remember, it doesn't mean your electricity bill is just going to drop 40% overnight. If there's anything we've learned, just like when uh, oil prices drop, we don't see the prices at the gas pumps drop immediately. You know, this is a, one way big oil companies kind of get you. Just like pharmaceutical companies, you know, they uh, they don't quite pass on the savings to us immediately if you've if we've kind of learned, right? So hopefully we'll see electricity prices come down. The other thing is, if you've seen that graph, how quickly it goes up and quickly goes down, um, hopefully it doesn't spike back up here quickly either. But uh, I'll keep you up to date here. But this is, it's hey, it's a good sign. The other thing here is that, you know, people that have natural gas, you know, sometimes you have these contracts where you're kind of locked in for the season and stuff like that. So you know, be aware of that. Do you have a, let me know in the comments, do you have a locked in price for the winter season of your natural gas? Sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's not good. You know, sometimes you just kind of know what you're paying, which is kind of a good thing. Um, but just because it's down now doesn't mean it will stay down. We've seen this with gas prices, oil prices, and now natural gas prices here as well. But at least it's down for now, which is a good thing. So I'll keep you up to date. President Biden extends the COVID public health emergency as the highly infectious Omicron variant XB1, XBB.1.5 spreads. Seems like there's an ever amount of variants spreading all the time, all the time. The Biden administration has extended the new extended the COVID-19 public health emergency as a highly transmissible Omicron subvariant stokes concerns that the nation may face another wave of hospitalizations from the disease this winter. Uh, and this also comes as China 
has more than 88 million people in Henan infected, one of their officials says alone. And remember, that is an absolutely enormous amount here, 88 million people. Oh my gosh, that is unbelievable because when you look at U.S. cases ever, we have had 101 million cases that at least has been reported. Remember that you know if you take an at-home test and don't report it to anybody, well, it doesn't go to the official you know cases, right? You just take an at-home test and just look at it. It does. It does. It doesn't get reported to anybody. So we've had 101 million cases reported. That's about a third of the entire population of the United States. And we've had 1.1 million people die in the U.S. alone from the, from the virus. Okay, that's a lot of people, over a million people. I've seen a lot of comments in the comment section from people saying, yes, I have lost a loved one. I've lost a family member. I've lost a relative. I've lost a friend. So, you know, my thoughts and prayers go out to, uh, you know, everybody here that has, you know, been affected. Uh, and worldwide here, you know, U.S. total cases, 665 million and over 6.7 million deaths here worldwide. That's a lot of people that have died here. Yeah, remember that our family here, uh, we actually caught the... We caught the virus from when we went to Disney for my wife's birthday and to take our son, who's four and a half, going to be turning five here um, at the end of April. We caught it when we went to Disney. My brother and uh, his fiance and, and his uh, side of the family actually caught it around Christmas, right before Christmas. And we actually haven't been able to see him since Christmas. We still have his Christmas presents and stuff. So uh, the virus is still here. And remember that, you know, we've had 101 million reported cases here in the U.S. Well, China right now, remember that they have over four times the po or around four times the population of the U.S. in total. They have over a billion people. Well, now that they have opened up their country, one of their officials is saying that they have more than 88 million people just in the Henan district that are infected alone. So think about that. That's almost the entire amount of people that have been infected in the United States ever infected right now in China. That's how many people are infected. It's literally just like spreading like wildfire there. Yeah, you can see here nearly 90% of people in Henan, China's third most populous province have now been infected with COVID, local health officials say. Imagine that. So they've opened up the floodgates there and almost 90% of people are now infected. Wow. Provincial official I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. Revealed the figure amounting to 88.5 million people are infected at a press conference. China is battling an unprecedented surge in cases after abandoning their zero COVID policies in December. The move followed a rare protest against lockdowns, quarantines, and mass tests. They did not specify a timeline for when all the infections happened. But as China's previous zero COVID policy kept cases to a minimum, it's likely the mass majority of their infections occurred in the past few weeks. He said visits to their fever clinics provided peaked on December 19th, after which it showed a continuous downward trend. However, though, they're still not reporting the data from the government. You can see that the Henan prov uh, provincial figures are in stark contrast to COVID figures from the central government. The official data from the actual government shows that only 120,000 people in the country of 1.4 billion people have been infected, and only 30 have died since the actual COVID policy shift. 
Authorities reported only three deaths in mainland China and only one more than the day before. So this is the problem with the actual overall government of China is they're just not reporting what's going on, even though, um, you know, the, the, we just have an actual report here that 88 million people were infected in just this one district alone. Now, remember here that um, even though the Biden administration has uh, extended this public health emergency, uh, it does look like SNAP benefits, the extra SNAP benefits here, I just did a video on this, are going to be ending. The extra SNAP benefits here are going to be ending here on... They will end nationwide after the February 2023 issuance. I just did a video here on this describing all the details on this. The temporary SNAP benefits put in place will end nationwide after February 2023. So I did a video here on this that I'll link you to with all the details on this as well. Um, so you guys can get more information on that. So I'll link you to that video next here, as well as another video you, you can watch here. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe down below to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on important details like this and everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. So click the subscribe button, then the bell icon after you subscribe. It's completely free to do so. Remember that new videos come out here on a daily basis every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll keep you up to date here. Also, thanks for liking and sharing these videos. Here's that new video about the changes to SNAP and Medicaid benefits coming out here. And here's my newest video on $1,232 checks going out from the IRS to millions of Americans here. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.